Here's my new tailgate trio. Let's make them. Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks and I've been gone for a bit but I've been working on a lot of stuff and today I'm going to show you what I just love this. I made one for my brother. He's going to be so surprised. This is part one of my tailgate trio. That's what I call them. This is my beer cozy mitten. Holds my glass of wine very nicely. Hold a beer bottle or a beer can or whatever so your hands don't get cold. When you live in a place like, well I'm from Minnesota, so it gets pretty darn cold. So if you want to tailgate at football games, it's almost always cold. And a cold beer and a cold hand, they don't go together. So you can be nice and toasty warm. So I love that. That's part one. Part two is the other mitten, because you have to have a mitten on both hands. But you shouldn't really two-fist it, so you just wouldn't need one for the drink. And then I've got my awesome accordion hat to go with it. So I am going to, let's see. Alright, I'm going to put these ones aside. I made several different ones. I love this pink one. This one is a surprise. And I just thought these colors looked great together. So I love it. You can get all three pieces out of, you get one skein of whatever color you like here of the Red Heart Super Saver. This one is grenadine, so it's a noxious pink. I love it because I'm going to keep these mittens for myself. And then I have a little smidge left over. I have probably, I don't know, 50 yards left. No, 30 yards left of, I love this yarn. And I used crushed raspberry as the accent colors. So you can see right here, it has some just some little flecks of pink, mostly white, some flecks of pink, and a little tiny bit of a dusty green in there. I just thought this was cute because I'm keeping this one. This one is my baby. And I got all three pieces out of one skein each. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to get started. I'm using a five and a half hook. I would stick with a four and, or with a five and a half, even if it might suggest a five, maybe a five. I would stick with the five and a half just to make sure it's going to fit. Um, I had my husband try this on. It fit him too. So this is going to be kind of a unisex thing. Even though this one is bright pink and I'm keeping it. So we're just going to start out with a slip knot. Any way you make a slip knot and on your five and a half hook with your four weight yarn. You are going to want to have some stitch markers handy. I would suggest you have four or five. It makes life a lot easier. It will make everything go much faster please go get your stitch markers. Alright, so we're going to start by chaining 48. And you do it kind of loosely because we need to work into those back bumps and at the very end we need these loops again. So I promise you're going to want to do this loosely. So chain 48. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 46, 47, and 48. All right, now we're going to single crochet. Turn over your chain so you can see all these little bumps down the back. Up here you see both loop, two loops. You want the back bumps. You want to single crochet to each one of these pretty loosely because you're going to want to use this again. At the very end, you're going to slip stitch all this together. So we're just going to single crochet all the way down. So you'll end up with 47 single crochets all the way down using all those back bumps. So I'll meet you at the end in just a moment. Now it takes a little bit longer to go through these back bumps, but you're going to want them. So don't take the don't take the shortcut. You're going to want these at the very end. It's very important. And there's number 47. Loosely single crochet all the way down. So I call this color A. So whatever color you want. I tried it when I make anything like this. I like the solid color to be color A and then color B is a coordinating fun one like this one. This one is just great. I loved all those colors and it reminded me of Mardi Gras so I decided I wanted to make that one. Alright so that is row one which is 47 single crochets and that is the end of 
using color A. So we're going to pull this back because we want to change colors right now. So go back through these loops again. And now we're going to add in my crushed raspberry. I love this yarn. And we're just going to slip in here, finish that single crochet and chain one. So now we're going to work with color B for a little while. So color B will have a four row repeat and it's really fun. So now we're going to turn our work. We're going to work in the back loops only for like pretty much always. So what we're going to do is 45 single crochets in the back loop only up, up the pink. Remember that was 47 so we're only going to do 45. So starting with this very first chain right here, back loop only, single crochet, back loop only, single crochet. Easy peasy. If you know how to do a single crochet, you've got this pattern mastered. It's really, really easy. So we're going to go 45 all the way down. You can count to 45 or you can just not do the last two. Since I'm talking, that's how I'm going to do it. And again, I'm using a five and a half hook. Make sure it's roomy. Yes, if you have tiny hands, you could probably use a five. If you have really big hands, go up to a six, but I'm using a five and a half. That's what I use every time and it fits everybody in my family. So again, these are single crochets in the back loop only. All the way down, 45 total. And there's our last two stitches. So this is 45 that I just did in color B. And there's two lonely little pink stitches. We will worry about them in a little bit. So now we just turn our work. There is no chain. Do not chain. Just turn your work. And we are going to work into the back loops only again. This time we're going to do 25. As soon as you get that first one done, mark it. You're going to want to mark it. It saves a lot of space lot of time. I promise you, you're going to go, if you give it one row without, you're going to go, oh, I wish I would have marked those. Get your stitch markers out. So we want 25 back loop only. That was one, two, 24, and 25. So there's our second row of color B. Making this little part right in here. Now again, we're going to turn our work, no chain, just turn it. And in that very that same stitch that you're already in, single crochet. And mark it. Mark that stitch that you just made. So this time, instead of 25, we want to do 23. So that was our first one, back loops only, single crochets all the way down. There's number three, we want 23. Single crochet, back loop only, number four. There's five, and six, and 23. There you go, there's two stitches left. The original, the, uh, the row before that was 25, and we just did 23. So that was row three of color B. Again, turn our work, no chain single crochet in that very same loop. Boom. Mark it. Believe me, you're going to want to mark it. Sometimes these stitches can disappear, especially if you're working with a dark yarn. Working with something that's dark or something that's really swirly like this, you could lose a stitch very easily. So mark it. Everybody has some stitch markers. Use them. Okay, this time we want 43. So going back down the 23 that we just did, so there is number one, here's two, back loop only, always back loop only, three, four, 22, and this one that's marked, because it's easy to get misplaced, 
you want to go in the back loop of that marked stitch and that's number 23. So that the 23 that we just did in the previous round, we just worked on those again. All right, now the next part is very, very important. You can take out our stitch marker. So right here, see this little bump right here. This is an amazingly important part. Go under here and into the next stitch down below in the back loop and just do a slip stitch all the way through all of that. So that would be technically stitch number 24. So we want to work all the way down here again, all the way to the end. So you would end up having 23 back loop only single crochets. This one is a slip stitch and then 19 more single crochet back loop only. So let's do the last 19. 18 and now on the very last stitch when you're on either end either way down here at this end of the pink or anytime you're at this end you want to go through the whole loop so this is a whole loop both loops just a regular old single crochet and we're going to change colors so you don't have to cut this just going to drop it aside a little bit and pull that pink back up because we didn't cut him off either. Alright, so then you just bring up the pink for color A, finish that stitch, and chain one. And then you do all of that again. That is the fun part. Alright, so we just did finish that stitch, chain one. So at the end you chain one in these middle parts you do not. So now we're going to go all the way down, all 47 stitches. You're going to need to go all the way back up to here. So let's work through this together. The very first stitch, back loop, single crochet. See, this is where we, this is our slip stitch. We want that one too. 20, 1, 42, and there's your mark stitch so you don't lose it. Back loop only of that mark stitch is number 43. I'm going to take that stitch marker out. And we are back to having to do a slip stitch to bring all these together. So we're going to go through this little lump right here from our previous row right here. Go through this bump and through the next stitch down through its back loop, slip stitch. And then there's our very last stitch on that row. Back loop only single crochet. We have to go down again. So again through this little back bump here and through this stitch back loop only, slip stitch, and under both, since we're at the very end, we're going to go under both loops, not a back loop only this time. When you're at the very, very end, it's a single crochet. Fantastic! There you go. Isn't that cute? we got one more row of this color A. All you have to do is chain one and turn because you're at the very end so you want to chain one. Bring your yarn up and do 47 all the way back down. Following all the way down to the other end. And you can see my white yarn, my crushed raspberry is waiting down at this end for me so we just have to get there. 47 single crochets all the way down to the other end. These are in the back loop. The very first one was under both loops. All of them in the middle are in the back loops only. And then our very last stitch is going to be under both loops. Just to make a nice finished edge. So if you're at the very edge 
you're going to want to use a complete single crochet, not just the back loop, but only if you're at the back, only if you're at the very, very end. Doing that saves some bulkiness. All right, so here's my last stitch with this color A, row one of this two rows. Goes under both, like a regular single crochet, since we're at the very, very end, we'll do a regular crochet, not back loop. And we're at the end, so we're going to chain one and bring up our yarn a little bit. And now all you have to do is follow all the way down 47 back loop only. And then our very last stitch, we'll go under both loops and change color. Finish that stitch with color B and chain one. And the really easy thing about this is that you just do this seven times. So we're going to start with the pink. We have white, the raspberry, and the and the pink. So we have the white and the pink. White, pink, white, pink. You want to end up with seven sections, seven sections of your color B. So repeat, repeat, repeat seven times and I will meet you back in just a moment. Okie dokie, you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six of my white sections of my color B. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll make one more together. We'll go through that one more time, just so you can catch where those little slip stitches are, because they might be a little sneaky. Get your stitch markers ready. So we're going to finish this stitch and chain one, just because we're at the very end. Oops. All right, the first one goes under both loops, single crochet, that's single crochet number one. So remember what you've been doing, all of these other ones, we're going to back loop only for the rest of them with a total of 45. So that was number one, do back loop only two, turn with no chain, and go right back in, back loop only for 25. There's two, 23, 24, and 25. There's 25. So we're going to turn our work again. No chain. Do not chain. Save some bulkiness. Do not chain. Go back into that same stitch that your working yarn is in right now. Single crochet in the back loop and mark that stitch right there. Now we want to do 23. That was number one. 23 back loop only. This is number 2, 22, and 23. Two stitches left. Yay! That means we did it right. Again, turn your work. Do not chain. And we're going to do all the way down. So we're going to go work, work down our 23 again. So we just did back loop only. Mark this stitch. Because I think I forgot to mark a different stitch and now I'm going to struggle. I'm going to be so sad. But hopefully we can find it. Alright, so there's back loop number one. There's two. I'm going to go all the way back down. Meet up with our pink yarn. Yarn color A. And there's the stitch that we just marked. Back loop of it. There's number 23. Alright, we can take that stitch out. And we go in this back bump right here. There's a little bump right here from when we turned. And the back loop of the next stitch. And slip stitch. And we're going to work the rest. That would be number one of these last 20. So that was 23 plus this one is 24. We need 19 more all the way down to the end. 22. And there's our marked stitch. Find the back loop, 43. Take that marker out. Now again, go through this bump right here, and the next stitch, back loop, slip stitch. There's our next marked stitch, back loop of that one with a single crochet. 
So every time we're jogging down here, we want to do a slip stitch because we have to jog back down to here. So here's our slip stitch. We're going to go under this little bump and into this stitch and slip stitch. And see, I forgot to put in my stitch marker, so this one is going to be a little bit more of a struggle because everything started to twist. So this is why the stitch markers are so important. There it is. And there's our last stitch. And we're going to chain one and turn because we're at the very end and work our way all the way back down again. And then we'll be ready for assembly. Under both loops for the first one. If you forget to do that, it really won't. It won't matter. You probably won't even be able to tell. I just do at the edges because I like the edges to be good. But since this is the fingertips and this is the wrist, you probably won't even notice. So we're going to go back loops all the way down, all the way back down to the beginning, all the way back down to the other end of the cuff. And there's our last stitch, number 47. All right, now we will do the assembly. Let's mark all of these edges. We're gonna need them. We're gonna need them. There's that one. And I marked him already. This is great. Now you can see that this is the wrong side because it has a lot of these little spots that are showing. This is the right side because it's got these great ridges on the color. This is the right side. So you want the right side facing out. So this is the wrong side. The wrong side's in the middle. I've moved the cuff over on this side right here. You can see where that is right here. And this is the hand part. I'm going to fold this up. Fold it in half. Now we have to find these corresponding stitches on the other side. So there's my last stitch there. On this side. So again, sometimes these just disappear. Disappear on you a little bit. And the quickest way to make sure is just to give them a count. Forty-seven, perfect. All right, we're at forty-seven. Forty-seven marked off on each side. You see we have one, two, three, four. Yeah, we have all seven sections plus we did another row of the pink. So we start with pink and end with pink. Or start with color A and end with color A. So now we're going to close this up through the first stitch that we have marked here. I have it marked with my yellow stitch marker. And then go back again through the other one that's marked and pull through both in single crochet. One. We're going to do 27 of those total. So again, through both loops. And this is why you wanted to, this is our very first work in the back bumps. That's why you wanted to do work in the back bumps and do it very loosely because now we have to work in those. And sometimes they can get really tight. So there's two. Again, we wanted 27 single crochet. There's number three. So there's 27. Now, we're not going to go through both sides. Now, we're just going to work up this way a little bit. Through the whole stitch, not the back loops only this time. So, there's a single crochet. One, two, and 18. From the cuff up, both sides together, single crochet for 27. And you get to there. Then, on this side right here is single crochet on this side only, not both sides together, like this. Just this side, so there's 18. And then we want to go through these last two on both sides. So we're going to go through that stitch and that stitch and a single crochet. And then our last stitch, both of them are marked.
single crochet. Nice. We'll turn. Now we want to get past those two and over onto this side again. So 18 back down of these ones that haven't been worked. take these markers out now because we're done with that spot. And I like to mark this very first one right here. Alright, so now we have a little bit of a hole. A little bit of a holder. We're going to work on the cup holder part now. It's so amazingly easy. This one was really fun to design. Alright, so now we're just going to Jump over here and single crochet. Well, that was my first stitch, so I might as well mark it. I have a marker in my hand, so I'm going to use it. I just do all the way around. 18 and 18, and then the two at the beginning. So there's a total of 38 around. And we're back to our first stitch. Now we're just going to work in the round. All right, double crochet 10. I'm going to mark it because I have a stitch marker right here. I always like to do that when I'm working in the round anyway, so why not? So that was number one. We want to double that. We want to double crochet ten of them. And ten. Double crochet two together nine times. So here's yarn over through two, yarn over through the next one through two, and then through all three. Again, that was number one. So we go through here, pull through, under the first two loops, two loops on your hook, through the next one, through three. There's two. I'm going to do that nine times. So this one's number three. And there's the last one. This is number nine. There's our last one, and double crochet back on down. So double crochet one. and 10. There we go. In the round again, we want to go around one more time. Double crochet everything. Every single one of these is a double crochet. And there will be... Let me move my stitch marker. There will be 29. 29 all the way around. I'm going to mark this, guys. We know when we're at the next round. So one single, or one double crochet in the top of every other, the double crochet that you just made. And there's the last one for that round. Now we're going to do that one more time. Double crochet all the way around should be 29. One more time, just like you just did, because we're almost done. All right, easy peasy. Double crochets all the way around. I'll meet you back at the stitch marker in just a second. And there's my last two stitches on this round of double crochets. Boom. Almost done. We're going to have one more round of single crochets to finish this off nicely. So I'm going to move my stitch marker to that one so I don't go too far. And then all the way around with single crochets. Meet you back at my stitch marker in just a moment. The last couple stitches. Yay! There. The can holder is done. Fasten off however you like to fasten off. I just do a slip stitch and then another. You can take these stitch markers out now from the other end as well. So we're not going to go back down there other than to weave in ends. So it looks like this. And you just tuck this part in. I love it. I love it. And I will even hold a little tumbler. So that's perfect. Now all we have to do is close this up. So now we whip stitch this from the inside. So let's turn it inside out real quick. Let's take a second. 
take a little remnant of yarn A. No special way of doing this, just a quick little whip stitch until you make it back to the beginning end. Just pull that closed, tie it in a knot, put it back right side out. Also, since this is finished off, and we're nearly not going to see it, you can weave in this end if you want to, or you can just snip it. I'm just going to snip it, because you'll never see it again. Because what we're going to do is you tuck this in, and it holds whatever you want it to hold. The only thing left to do is weave in the ends at the very beginning. This is why you want this to be all stretchy. Right here, you don't want these loops from when you're color changing to be too tight, otherwise you lose all your stretch. Keep your hands nice and warm so your cold hand isn't going to touch your cold beer. Can, everybody can be warm. This is part one of my tailgate trio. Thanks for stopping by. Again, I'm Beth. This is Thimble Hooks. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for everything over the last month. Um, thanks for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to my channel, tell all your friends, and stop back soon. I've got some really great things coming up. Thanks. Have a great day.